when it comes to prehistoric rivalries. Visions of Tyrannosaurus rex locked in brutal battles with Spinosaurus or Gigantosaurus come alive, battles immortalised by movies and myth. But here's the truth, these epic encounters are nothing more than fantasy. Spinosaurus and Gigantosaurus never crossed paths with T-Rex, separated as they were by millions of years and vast continents. In reality, T-Rex's greatest threat wasn't an apex predator, it was a powerful herbivore the iconic Triceratops. Fossil evidence reveals that Triceratops did what no other creature could, inflicting real damage on the tyrant lizard king and transforming itself from mere prey to a dangerous, worthy adversary. This unexpected rivalry redefines our view of T-Rex's reign and cements Triceratops as one of history's most formidable icons. The story of Triceratops begins with a case of mistaken identity that highlights the evolving nature of paleontological understanding. In 1887, a pair of brow horns were discovered in Colorado. These fossils made their way to the renowned paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh. At the time, the concept of horned dinosaurs was entirely unknown to science. Faced with these unfamiliar remains, Marsh concluded they belonged to an ancient bison from the Pleistocene epoch. He named this supposed new species Bison Alticornis. Marsh's misclassification is understandable in context. The idea of a horned dinosaur was as alien to 19th century paleontologists as smartphones would have been to the dinosaurs themselves. However, the truth would soon come to light in a series of discoveries that would revolutionise our understanding of prehistoric life. Just one year after the misidentified horns were unearthed, Marsh himself introduced the world to Ceratops, the first recognised horned dinosaur. This discovery opened the door to a whole new category of dinosaurs, setting the stage for even more dramatic finds. In the same year as Ceratops unveiling, a pivotal event occurred. A cowboy stumbled upon a massive skull protruding from a ravine. Like other horned dinosaur remains of the time, it was sent to Marsh for analysis. Initially, Marsh classified it as a new species of Ceratops, but the best was yet to come. A year later, another well-preserved skull was discovered. This specimen was similar to the previous Ceratops skull, but with one crucial difference. It had all three of its horns intact. This discovery led Marsh to a realization. The new Ceratops species and his misidentified bison were all the same animal. Moreover, they represented an entirely new genus of horned dinosaur. Marsh named this new genus Triceratops meaning three-horned face. The discovery of Triceratops was more than just another addition to the prehistoric bestiary. It played a crucial role in dinosaur classification, with the major group Ceratopsia being defined as all marginocephalians more closely related to Triceratops than Psittacosaurus. Within this group, Triceratops falls under the Ceratopsid family and, more specifically, the Triceratops tribe, where it is joined by its closest relative the contemporary Taurosaurus. Triceratops quickly captured public imagination, thanks to its distinctive appearance featuring a massive skull, impressive horns, and that iconic frill. The abundance of well-preserved specimens, particularly from fossil-rich areas like the Hell Creek Formation, allowed scientists to study Triceratops in great detail. This wealth of fossils also led to the realization that there had been more than one species of Triceratops, since the 19th century, paleontologists have described over 15 species of Triceratops. However, rigorous scientific scrutiny has whittled this number down considerably. Today, only two species are considered valid, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prorsus. While these species would have appeared quite similar at a glance, they did have subtle differences. Triceratops horridus typically had a longer snout and shorter nasal horn, while Triceratops prorsus sported a shorter snout but a longer nasal horn. Regardless of species, all Triceratops were imposing animals, and adult Triceratops was among the largest non-sauropod dinosaurs of its time, rivaling even T. rex in bulk. They ranged from 8 to 9 meters or 26 to 30 feet in length, and weighed between 6 and 10 tons on average. Exceptionally large individuals may have tipped the scales at 12 tons, potentially outweighing T. rex and making Triceratops a contender for the title of largest Ceratopsian. To put this size into perspective, 
A 12-ton Triceratops would have weighed as much as six average-sized cars or 120 average American men. This immense size undoubtedly provided adult Triceratops with a degree of safety from predators. But in the perilous world of the late Cretaceous, size alone wasn't always enough. While many Ceratopsians had robust builds, Triceratops stood out for its exceptionally thick bones, far beyond what's typically seen in dinosaurs. One of these was its remarkably robust skeletal structure. Triceratops bones were far more thickened than what's typically seen in dinosaurs. A fact nicely illustrated by comparing a Triceratops femur to that of a large African elephant. The Triceratops bone would dwarf its modern counterpart. This robust build served a dual purpose. It provided an extra layer of protection against injury and combined with Triceratops low slung body, gave the animal a lower center of gravity. This made Triceratops more stable and harder to knock over, a crucial advantage when facing large predators. However, Triceratops' most iconic feature and its primary defense was its enormous skull. Triceratops possessed one of the largest skulls of any land animal, with the largest recorded specimens measuring 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in length. This massive head could make up more than one third of the animal's total length. A significant portion of this cranial real estate was taken up by the animal's distinctive frill. This structure likely served multiple purposes. In addition to its probable role in species recognition and display, the frill provided vital protection for the animal's neck, a vulnerable target for any would-be predator. The frill's effectiveness as a defensive structure was enhanced by its composition. It was made of fibrolamella bone, a special type of bone known for its ability to heal rapidly when damaged. The sheer size of the frill may have also played a role in deterring predators. The sight of this enormous bony shield attached to a multi-ton animal would have given even T-Rex pause for thought. But if the frill was Triceratops' shield, its horns were most certainly its sword. These weapons have long captured the public imagination, and for good reason. All three horns were exceptionally sharp and long, with the two situated above the eyes being the largest. These brow horns could measure up to 1.15 meters or 3.77 feet in length, about as long as two rhino horns stacked on top of each other. Moreover, most paleontologists believe that in life, these horns were covered with a sheath of keratin, much like the horns of modern animals, making them even larger and sharper than the fossilized bone cores suggest. The function of these impressive weapons has been the subject of much debate among paleontologists. While the popular image of Triceratops using its horns to fend off T-Rex is compelling, Many scientists believe that their primary purpose was for combat with other Triceratops. Evidence suggests that intraspecific combat was common among Triceratops. These battles, likely fought over mating rights or territory, would have been brutal affairs. Triceratops would have charged at high speeds, their horns interlocking as they grapple for dominance. Studies of Triceratops skulls have found that about 14% bear injuries consistent with horn-inflicted wounds indicating that such combat was a regular occurrence. Even the most famous Triceratops specimen, nicknamed Big John, bears testament to the intensity of these conflicts. His skull shows a large hole in the frill, thought to have been inflicted by a rival's horn. This wound likely became infected, ultimately leading to Big John's demise. Despite being portrayed as placid plant eaters, Triceratops could clearly be quite ferocious when the situation demanded. This combination of defensive adaptations and offensive capabilities made Triceratops a formidable opponent, even for the apex predator of its time, Tyrannosaurus rex. T-Rex was indeed the only carnivore large enough to pose a significant threat to adult Triceratops, and we have fossil evidence that predation did occur. Some Triceratops specimens bear damage to the skull and body that could only have been inflicted by a T-Rex's teeth. However, these encounters were far from one-sided affairs. The clearest evidence of Triceratops' ability to hold its own against T-Rex comes from a remarkable fossil known as the Juling dinosaurs. This extraordinary specimen consists of a juvenile T-Rex and an adult Triceratops preserved together. While it's believed that the two didn't kill each other directly but rather died from external forces, both show signs of combat. Intriguingly, 
the T-Rex appears to have sustained the most damage, with most of its teeth shattered, a broken finger and a cracked skull. The Triceratops, in contrast, suffered only minor injuries, including a T-Rex tooth embedded in its body. Another fascinating piece of evidence comes from a large adult T-Rex. This 12 meter or 40 foot long specimen has an interesting hole in the back of its left femur that resembles a puncture wound. The shape and size of this injury have led some paleontologists to conclude that it was caused by a Triceratops horn. Even more intriguingly, the location of the wound suggests that the Triceratops may have attacked the T-Rex from behind. These findings have led some experts, like paleontologist Peter Dodson, to propose a controversial idea. In a fair, direct confrontation between a full-grown Triceratops and a T-Rex, the odds might actually favor the Triceratops. While this notion is still debated, it challenges our traditional view of the power dynamics in the late Cretaceous ecosystem. Triceratops' impressive defensive capabilities become even more remarkable when you consider that it was an herbivore. Its fearsome appearance belied a diet consisting entirely of plants. Like many other herbivorous dinosaurs, Triceratops had rows of smaller teeth arranged in dental batteries that allowed it to shear through tough vegetation. In adults, these batteries could have amounted to over 800 teeth at once, more than 25 times the number of teeth humans have. Triceratops also had a beak that aided in feeding. This beak, similar to that of modern turtles, was used to strip and pluck leaves from plants. Given its low-slung body, paleontologists believe that Triceratops' diet consisted primarily of low-growing vegetation like ferns, cycads, and palms. When faced with taller plants, Triceratops could use its considerable bulk to push them to the ground, demonstrating a feeding strategy that maximized its physical attributes. This combination of effective feeding apparatus and defensive capabilities made Triceratops incredibly successful in its environment. In fact, Triceratops was often the most abundant large animal in its ecosystem. In some areas, such as the Upper Hell Creek Formation, Triceratops fossils account for a staggering 69% of all dinosaur remains. Overall, Triceratops makes up about 40% of all dinosaur skeletons found worldwide, making it one of the most commonly discovered dinosaurs. Given this abundance, one might expect Triceratops to have been a highly social animal, roaming in large herds like some other herbivorous dinosaurs. However, the fossil evidence suggests otherwise. Unlike some horned dinosaurs that have been found in groups numbering in the hundreds or even thousands, the vast majority of Triceratops skeletons are found in isolation. The largest known group of Triceratops fossils consists of only five individuals, suggesting that adults may have preferred a more solitary lifestyle. This doesn't mean Triceratops was entirely antisocial. There's evidence that younger Triceratops may have formed small groups, possibly for protection or social learning. One fossil site, for instance, contained the remains of three juveniles together. But as they grew older and more capable of defending themselves, it seems Triceratops preferred to go solo. This solitary lifestyle is yet another testament to the animal's formidable nature, suggesting that even as herbivores, Adult Triceratops were more than capable of fending for themselves in a world filled with dangerous predators. Triceratops shared its world with a diverse array of other prehistoric creatures. These dinosaurs included Edmontosaurus, Torosaurus, Inosaurus, Anzu, Drecorex, Alamosaurus, and Struthiomimus. Predators in the area featured the Acoraptor, Dakotaraptor, and of course, the T-Rex as well as the non-dinosaur predators Borelosuchus, Champsosaurus, and Brachychamsa. Additionally, the region was home to various non-dinosaurs like turtles, mammals, fish, snakes, amphibians, insects, and pterosaurs. The environment Triceratops called home was a lush, subtropical landscape dotted with swamps, lakes, and rivers. This diverse ecosystem supported an abundance of plant life, providing ample food for Triceratops and other herbivores. The most famous of these prehistoric environments is the Hell Creek Formation, where Triceratops could be found regularly between 68 and 66 million years ago. However, like all non-avian dinosaurs, Triceratops' reign came to an abrupt end with the KT extinction event. This catastrophic event, 
likely caused by an asteroid impact, wiped out approximately 75% of plant and animal species on Earth, including all large dinosaurs. Interestingly, Triceratops may have been one of the last dinosaurs standing, as a Triceratops fossil found just 13 centimeters above the K-peak boundary. The geological marker of the extinction event is considered one of the youngest known non-avian dinosaur fossils. This discovery suggests that Triceratops may have survived right up until the very end of the Cretaceous period, perhaps even outlasting its old rival, T-Rex. If Triceratops was the only dinosaur known to have injured the mighty T-Rex, it really makes you wonder. Just how terrifying was the T-Rex actually? Find out in our next video. And as always, thank you for watching.